Hi everyone, in this video we will be discussing about sustainability pillar of AWS Well Architected Framework. So we have discussed that AWS Well Architected Framework is a framework which helps cloud architects build secure, high performing, resilient and efficient infrastructure for a variety of applications and workloads. So it means we want to implement something in the cloud then we need some cloud architect and cloud art architect by themselves, they need some guidelines, some best practices, which, which can assure them for success. And workload, workload is actually uh, is a collection of resources and code that delivers best business value. So workload can be like a marketing website that can also be an analytic uh, platforms. Now, this AWS Well Architected Framework provides a set of questions and design principles across six pillars and we have discussed all those five pillars and this will be the last pillar that's the sustainability pillar which we are going to discuss in this video. So the sustainability pillar focuses on environmental impact. So you can see we are having these all environmental impacts and now to address this AWS has introduced this sustainability pillar and this actually mostly works on especially on energy consumptions uh, and efficiency because they are important levers for architects to inform direct action to reduce resource usage so whatever resource we are using maybe if we reduce them then maybe indirectly we can actually reduce the impact uh, in the environmental impact so sustainability pillar helps us to consistently measure architecture against best practices and identify areas for improvement. Improvement in such a way that we want to minimize the impact. We want to mitigate climate crisis and we want to make use of green energy. So there are six design principles for sustainability in the cloud. First one is First, understand your impact. Establish sustainability goals. Maximize utilization. Anticipate and adopt new, more efficient hardware and software offering. Use managed services so, and reduce the downstream impact of your cloud workload. So first is to understand your impact. To understand your impact, we need to measure the impact of your cloud workload and model the future impact of your workload using customer use of your product and impact resulting from their eventual dis decommissioning and retirement. So like we want to calculate the, what the impact will have like cloud workload which we have in the cloud, we want to estimate its impact and then whatever data we have by by estimating from the use of i mean customer use of products so we use this data to establish some key performance indicator of the kpi the ultimate goal is to make our system energy efficient and second is to establish sustainability goals so sustainability is actually ability to maintain or support a process over time so that's sustainability definition. So for that, we need to have some goals. And so for each cloud workload, which we have established long-term sustainability goal as uh, reducing the compute and storage resources required per transaction. So here you can see it says that reducing the compute and storage resources required per transaction. So you can see by reducing compute as well as storage, we are indirectly, or we can be directly, we are going to reduce the energy requirement. Maximize utilization, so right size workloads and implement efficiency design to ensure high utilization. So it means whatever resource you have already uh, subscribed for, for instance, whatever resources you have provisioned in the cloud, try to maximally utilize them. So they should not be sitting idle, we should maximize in this way, uh, we actually improve the energy efficiency of the underlying hardware. Anticipate and adopt new, more efficient hardware and software of offering. So this continuously monitor and evaluate new, 
more efficient hardware and software offering. So like some software, some hardware, they may have some built-in facility or something, something which can offer us to minimize energy consumption, to go green, for instance. So it says that continuously monitor such kind of like hardware and software and try to use them. And designed for flexibility to allow for the rapid adoption of new efficient technologies. Like in your system, in your architecture, there should be some flexibility so that in future, if there is some system, some hardware or software which is energy efficient, then your architecture should be able to accept it. Fifth one is used managed services. So try to increase use of managed services such as uh, AWS Fargate for serverless containers. Managed services means you don't need to consider, you don't need to take care of all the infrastructure. And uh, this thing, these all things will be taken care of by cloud and then this will also actually ultimately will help you to reduce energy consumption. And automatically moving infrequently access data to cold storage with Amazon S3 lifecycle configurations. Here it says that if you have some data, if you have some like something which is no more um, being accessed by the client, not frequently accessed by the client, then you can shift that kind of data from maybe uh, from from S3 bucket, maybe you can shift to glaciers and if there's no more use, then maybe you can delete it. So the thing is that it says that you try to maximize the utilization of um, of Amazon S3. So life cycle means you you actually have something in S3, then you move, move to somewhere else and then ultimately maybe you might moving it to uh, a glacier. So that is about uh, storage and we'll be discussing in some other video. And then use Amazon EC2 auto scaling to adjust capacity to meet demand. So auto scaling means you can scale up or scale down. Maybe you can increase or decrease EC2 instances to meet your demands. So it means you should not have some EC2 instance, instances which should be sitting idle and they might be just using energy. So minimize that. It allow. I mean, it is recommended to have auto scaling enabled. Reduce the downstream impact of your cloud workload. So downstream impact means reduce the uh, reduce or eliminate the need for customers. So customers to upgrade their devices to use your services. So if you're doing, if you're making some changes, then they should not uh, compel the customers to make some changes or upgrade their devices. We should be, um, I mean, um, avoiding such, such things. And there are six best practice areas for sustainability in the cloud. And they are region selection, user behavior pattern, software and architecture pattern, data patterns, hardware patterns, development and deployment process. So sustainability in the cloud is a continuous effort focused primarily on energy reduction. So like they have some goals in I think 1940 or maybe 1950 or 1940 they want to minimize, they have uh, agreed on to minimize the carbon emission impact and this is achieved by so whatever goal is goal is to uh, on energy reduction and this is achieved by the maximum benefit from the resources provision and minimizing the total resources required so the first best practice area is region selection region selection means Try to use the region selection where we have some energy or they are using some green energy. They are maybe in some of the region lights, they are not using like coal or something. So try to use those regions if feasible where green energy or the alternative energy is being used. So question is, so these are some foundational questions which can help us to, to achieve sustainability. So how do you select regions to support your sustainability goals? That's the question. And then uh, if you want to find out the relevant best practices or some context about those uh, foundational questions, I'll put the link in the description section because this is the recently added pillar. Maybe you won't have much information about that. So you can find further detail in the document. The second one is user behavior 
pattern that how do you take advantage of user behavior patterns to, to support your sustainability goal user patterns like we can understand at what time user are using your services and uh, at some sometimes will be peak time then some some of the times they won't be using those all resources at that time then maybe you can switch off some of your resources to save energy third is software and architecture pattern so how do you take advantage of software and architecture patterns to support your sustainability goal so architectural design as well as use of software so there can be some of the architecture designs will which will help you to reduce energy consumptions data patterns so how do you take advantage of data access and usage pattern to support your sustainability goal so usage patterns again same like if there are there is some data which is not being frequently accessed by the user then it's better to move that kind of data to maybe to some cold storage hardware pattern so how do you how do your hardware management and usage practice support your sustainability goals so like if there is some hardware and in the new newly hardware introduced in the market which can reduce your energy consumption or which can help you to achieve energy efficiency of the system then how you are architecture how you are taking an benefit of that development and deployment process so how do you development how do your development and deployment process support your sustainability goal so during development and deployment phase as well we can have some ways by which we can try to minimize the energy consumptions so these are these were the six best practices which we uh, try to cover i just briefly this go through those um best practices and design principle i know that this is not like a complete discussion about that but this was some general uh, familiarity with the terminology which is used in aws well architected framework and in this video we discussed about sustainability pillar which is very much important from the energy efficiency point of view that how we will achieve our goals to minimize the energy consumption or to minimize the risk of uh, carbon emission so i hope this might be helpful for some of you and um, yeah for further detail i'll put the link of the uh, of the document which i have used to make all these videos and of course that document is um, from aws and further detail you can find there so thank you thank you very much for for your time hope to see you in some other video